This video will cover the fundamentals of the mandibular block for a pediatric patient. The crucial first step in the process of effectively and efficiently treating your pediatric patient is to gain their trust. Explain the process as you go at a level that is appropriate for the age of your patient. Topical. Explain to your patient, I'm going to place my bubblegum flavored jelly right here by your tooth. Now this jelly tastes kind of spicy, but we're going to make sure that we wash it all out in just a minute. This jelly helps us make your tooth go to sleep so that nothing will bother you. Place your finger on the patient's chin and push firmly while telling the child, you're going to feel a big push with my finger, just like this, way in the back of your mouth. The only thing I need you to do is stay open really big and stay really still so I can see where I need to put my sleepy juice. At this time, increase the nitrous oxide flow rate from 3 liters per minute of oxygen and 2 liters per minute of nitrous up to 3 liters per minute of nitrous oxide and 2 liters per minute of oxygen. This bolus dose will help the child reach that blitzed state. This should only be done for the short period of time that it takes to deliver the initial injection. Next, place the topical and allow the topical anesthetic to sit on the tissue for 60 to 90 seconds. If the injection is not initiated within 90 seconds, reapply the topical anesthetic. By ensuring that your assistant is loading the cotton tip applicator with the appropriate amount of topical, you can avoid the need to clear any excess. Remove the cotton tip applicator and place it on the patient tray. Without delay, the assistant should pass the syringe below and behind the head of the patient. The syringe should always remain out of the view of the patient. Your assistant should ensure that the plunger is fully engaged. As you accept the syringe with the aspiration window visible, your assistant will remove the head cap of the needle and place the cap in the recapping device. Never at any time should an uncapped needle be passed from an assistant to a doctor or a doctor to an assistant. Using your mirror to retract the cheek and with the assistant holding the bottom lip below the central incisors to avoid any pinching of the lip, enter the mouth with the syringe parallel to all of the teeth in the arch, keeping an equal distance from the occlusal surface of the posterior teeth and the incisal edge of the anterior teeth keeping parallel with the ridge. With a single smooth motion, allow the full length of the needle to penetrate the retromolar pad area at the top of the triangle. There is no need to be overly focused on trying to feel the path along the ascending ramus or other morphology as required in adults. With children, this technique is extremely effective and is not particularly technique sensitive. Once you have penetrated to the hub, slowly aspirate to confirm that you have not entered a vessel. Slowly deliver the anesthetic while occasionally aspirating. If you are anesthetizing only that quadrant, deliver the majority of the carpial in one motion, dispensing the last of the carpial as you retract from the mouth. If you are anesthetizing the entire mandibular arch, express half on the first side, also extruding while retracting from the mouth, and the other half of the carpial on the opposite side. Have the assistant pass and uncap a new syringe and return to the last area injected. Using the same technique, upload a full carpial at that site. Before moving to the opposite side, adjust the nitrous oxide flow rate back to the standard 3 liters per minute of oxygen to 2 liters per minute of nitrous oxide. Next, administer a long buccal injection posterior to the primary second molar or first permanent molar depending on the child's current dentition. This will ensure profound anesthesia for your patient. Proceed to the opposite side and repeat. This will essentially give the child 1.5 carpials on each side. 